there, Michelle Short here for My Favourite Things. Today I have a colourful card to share with you using the Paper Planes set. So let's get started. This is the Adorable Paper Planes set. Ordinarily when I make a card I do tend to stamp out the images first and then sort out the background afterwards but in this case I actually want to colour coordinate my images with the background so I'm going to start off with the background. I'm taking the third largest size in the Jumbo Fishtail Banner Stacks Dynamics and I'm going to partially cut that onto some white cardstock. The reason I'm doing partial die cutting today is so that I can elongate this shape. I absolutely love it but I want it to be taller so when I bring it to my die cutting machine here I'm going to place it at the top plate further down on this shape so anything that's underneath that plate is going to cut anything above it is not going to cut I'm using my old cuttle bug here because it fits nicely on the screen but any die cutting machine will work for this so when I take this out of the die cutting machine I can remove that die and you can see that it's only cut the bottom of this shape. To cut the top part I could just place the die back over the top kind of push it up a little bit and then run it through my die cutting machine again but do it the opposite way so that I only cut the top and not the bottom but since this is just going to be a straight line I may as well just cut it on my guillotine. I'm not going to get that nice rounded edge that you do get when you die cut with dies but I thought it was just a quicker way for me to do it. So I'm just bringing this here to my mini guillotine just making sure that that cut line is going to line up with the bottom piece where I die cut that with the die. So just cutting a tiny little bit more off there just to make sure that that's completely straight. I'm then adding some removable adhesive onto the back of that and placing that down onto a scrap piece of paper. I can then bring in the cloud stencil. This is the original cloud stencil, so the one with the largest cloud edges. Probably my most used stencil of all time. I'm placing that down onto the banner piece where I want the first set of clouds to be. Once I'm happy with the placement, I can hold that down with some low tack tape. I'm then bringing in my inks here and I'm using Distress inks in kind of like a rainbow colour sort of selection I'm starting off with picked raspberry at the top now I'm not a fan of red so I do often start my rainbows with a pink rather than a red and actually I'm not using a kind of traditional green either I'm using more of a mint green so this is just my preferred color combination for rainbows so I'm adding the colour onto the banner piece using an ink blending brush and I'm trying to focus most of the darker colour towards the bottom where that kind of stencil meets the cardstock. I'm then just removing any excess ink off of that stencil with a cloth and then I can remove that tape holding it down. And then I can lift off that stencil and then I'm just going to rotate it so that I get a different cloud edge each time. Once I'm happy with the placement of this one, I can hold that down with that post-it tape again and then I can bring in the next colour. And for this one, I'm using dried marigold. So again, focusing most of the darker colour towards the bottom of this kind of cloud piece here so that the top of the cloud sort of ends up being quite white, like the colour of the cardstock. I think it just kind of adds a little bit of depth to the clouds, make them look a little bit fluffy. For the yellow, I'm using mustard seed. This is quite a strong colour, so I am dabbing off the excess from that brush onto that scrap piece of paper. For the green, I'm using cracked pistachio. And like I say, this is more of a kind of like a mint toned green rather than a grass green. So again, focusing most of that colour towards the bottom and fading it up to white at the top. For the blue, I'm using Mermaid Lagoon. And again, dabbing off the excess where I need to. For the purple, I'm using Wilted Violet. And then I didn't want there to be like completely white at the bottom, but I did 
think about just having the purple all the way to the bottom but I kind of wanted it to look like there was still a cloud piece if that makes sense so for this tiny little beast the here at the bottom that's just the white cardstock I'm bringing back that picked raspberry so that I've got that kind of pink there at the bottom and it's just going to look like there's kind of like another sequence of rainbow clouds below. I can then bring in the stamp set and I have stamped some of the images onto some smooth white cardstock using black ink and I'm going to colour coordinate them with the background. So what I've done here is kind of done like a little cheat sheet for myself. This is just on scrap cardstock. When I did this originally I cut out all of the images first, placed them onto the background so that I could see sort of like the placement of them first before I did any colouring but it is quite Quite difficult to colour in these tiny little images once they've been die cut so I've now got this kind of cheat sheet ready so that I know when I'm colouring in these images what colours I need to colour them before actually die cutting. So for the pink bird I started off with RV66 in my Copic markers and then I'm blending that out with the RV55. I can then colour in the rest of the bird using RV52 and blend that with the darkest shades. And this colour combination I think works really nicely. It kind of looks quite similar to the picked raspberry distress ink that I've used in the background. And then I've just got the one pink cloud, so I'm using RV55, RV52. And then I'm just doing the same kind of thing that I did in my last video with the cloud and I'm just adding some darker areas sort of in certain places and then I can bring in the colourless blender and I can really blend that out so that there's no harsh edges in the centre. I want the centres of these clouds to be really quite pale. I can then bring in Y13 for the beak of the bird. Then for the orange clouds, I'm starting off with YR65 and again just adding that on a few areas around the outside edges. I don't want to outline them completely, I do still want some white areas but I definitely want some colour on these clouds. I can then blend that out with the YR61 followed by the YR quadruple zero and this is quite a lot lighter so I didn't really need to use the colourless blender but I am just going to go in with that like I say just to make sure that there's no harsh edges. Then for the green cloud I'm using G02, G00 and then G000 and again bringing in that colourless blender. For the blue cloud I'm using B01 B triple zero and then B quadruple zero had to think then and then the colourless blender. And then for the bluebird, I did start off with B02, but as I'm colouring this in, I'm feeling that it's not quite dark enough. So I'm going to bring in the B04 as my darkest shade. I can then blend that out with the B01. followed by the B000. And then again, just using that Y13 for the beak. And then for the purple clouds, I'm starting off with V15. I am creating three purple clouds here. One of them does overlap the pink quite a lot, so I could have done it pink, but I decided that I kind of wanted it to sort of be in that rainbow order. So I blended the V15 out with the V12, followed by the V01, and then the colourless blender. For the dog, I'm using some brown tones, so I'm starting off with my darkest shade, which is E49. Going around mainly the darker areas, which I think would be on the right hand side and towards the bottom. So going under where that scarf is, and then kind of around that patch there on the back of his body, towards the bottom of his ears. I can then bring in the E59 and bring that colour out further into the image. 
not forgetting his little tail there. So just bringing that colour out further onto his kind of face there. And then I can blend that out with the E57. And I am adding a little bit of that onto the patch there on his back as well. And then I can finish off with the E55. Now this colour is quite a lot lighter than that E57. So I do go back in with the E57 just to add a little bit of extra darkness onto the areas where I didn't think blended quite as well. And then finish off with that E55 again. For his nose, I'm using E49. And I'm trying to just leave a tiny little white area as a highlight. Then for his scarf, I'm starting off with B06. Adding that to the scarf and then also his goggles there as well. And then I felt that that wasn't quite dark enough, so I'm bringing in B18. And then blending that out with the B06. I did go over the areas on the left hand side of his goggles kind of around his eyes. I did have to cut that out of the video <laughs> purely because my head completely got in the way. It's just such a tiny little area but I did then go in with the B04 and then finishing off here with the B02. And just going over those areas a couple of times just to try and really blend those colours together. And I did feel that I lost a little bit of that darkness so I'm going back in with the B18. I'm not going to blend this out, I'm just adding that towards the really dark areas. And then for the clear parts on the goggles I used B00 or B01, I sorry, and then B quadruple zero. For the paper plane I'm starting off with C7. It is always quite difficult to colour something that looks like paper, something that would be white. But I wanted to go with some quite dark areas on this paper plane so that it definitely looked like they were sort of folded up. So I went in with that C7, blended that out with the C5, followed by the C3. And now I'm going in with C0 and C00. And then again, I felt that there wasn't quite enough darkness in that centre portion, so I'm going back in with that C7. I can then take the coordinating paper planes dynamics, hold them over the images and hold them down with some low tack tape. I did have to run this panel through my die cutting machine a few times to cut out all of those clouds. I can then pop those out at the other side. And I, for these smaller images, especially the clouds here, I did have to cover those completely with the tape. So I'm just removing those dies and then I can pop those out. For the sentiment, I'm taking the sentiment that says sending paper hugs your way from the paper plane set. I'm going to stamp that down onto some black licorice cardstock. So placing that in my mini misty here, prepping the cardstock with an anti-static powder tool and removing any excess powder. And then I can ink up the sentiment using Versamark ink. This is a clear sticky ink so that when I add the embossing powder on top, it's going to stick to it. So just pressing that down onto the cardstock to transfer that ink. I can then apply some detail white embossing powder. I do like to apply it a few times, tap off the excess to make sure that I get a nice coverage of that powder. If I've got any excess where I don't want it, I can remove that with a dry brush before heat setting the powder. And I do like to heat from the front and the back. That just helps to prevent any overheating of that powder. And it does help a little bit with warping of the cardstock as well. So once that has completely melted, I'm then just going to fan it in the air for a little while to try and cool that down before I bring in a cloth to remove any of the excess anti-static powder. And then I can cut that down into a strip. So now I've got all of my pieces ready to go, I can start assembling. I've added some thin foam tape onto the back of the dog and the plane, as well as the sentiment and the birds. 
for the clouds I'm going to adhere them down with some liquid glue I wanted there to be some sort of different depths on this card so some pieces are kind of popped up with foam tape and other pieces are just adhered on flat I can then color coordinate these clouds with the background I do have my kind of cheat sheet there to the kind of side of me just so that I can see where I thought that I wanted these pieces to go I obviously have got that kind of color coordination which is quite helpful and I did end up moving them around a little bit to what I did originally so I can place that pink cloud there at the top followed by the orange ones here and I'm just having some of the clouds sort of overlap the outside edges of the panel I think it makes it look a little bit like it's part of sort of a bigger scene and then I've got this other orange cloud here on the left hand side most of that actually is in the yellow area so in hindsight I could have changed that to be yellow rather than orange but never mind I can then remove the backings off of the foam tape on this bird here and place that down I can then bring in the blue cloud followed by the green cloud and then I can also adhere down that blue bird there as well. I can then remove the backings off of the foam tape on the dog and plane image. And then I can pop that down and I'm just kind of hovering it in place to start with, making sure that it's going to be placed down where I want it to before I really press that down. I'm then adding some more thin foam tape onto the back of the banner piece, removing the backing with some tweezers. And then I can place that down onto an A2 size white card base. So that's a finished size of four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches. And then I've added the sentiment strip on top. I'm then just going to finish off with some crystal glaze onto the kind of eye area of the goggles. It's just going to make it look a little bit like their glass. So I've added some of that into the center and then I'm just using a pokey tool here just to spread that out. So that is the card finished for today. I really love those all those kind of tiny clouds and that they color coordinate with the clouds in the background. Links to the products that I used will be listed in the description bar here on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.